Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure, personal pleasure, as well as an official pleasure, to be on this trip and to welcome the gracious lady that we do to South Carolina. I know what South Carolina is going to do on November the 3rd. We are going to re-elect, no, I say elect, Lyndon B. Johnson, brother. Chairman of the Young Democratic Club. And Mrs. Edward Buckle, co chairman of the Johnson Girls Movement. Mr. Bernard R. Maybank, Jr., Chairman of the Democratic Party of Charleston County. Ladies and gentlemen, probably one of the most distinguished local personages that we have in the community is a man that made this shopping center possible and who is on our platform, Mr. Edward Cronsberg. <laughs> At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to turn the meeting over to one of the outstanding members of Congress of the United States of America, Mr. Hale Boggs, the state of Louisiana, the Democratic whip in the Congress of the United States, and one of the real forces in this country, Mr. Hale Boggs of Louisiana. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Democrats, I am very happy indeed to be here in one of the great democratic states of the United States of America. <coughs> and, I am, and I am especially happy, I am especially happy to be in the home district of Mendel Rivers, one of the great congressmen in the United States of America. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a great honor here tonight. Too close. Which one of these mics is live? This one? Can you hear me now? Yeah. 
I notice that there are some uh, young people here who have no sense of American democracy. <laughs> and who obviously don't come from the South, where I come from, where we were born to be courteous. Who seem to occupy that time with a chant more reminiscent of Hitler than anything in America. This is an American gathering and not a Nazi gathering. <laughs> and I am very happy indeed, my friends, that on this platform are some of the great Americans of all times from the South. States in the Union, one of the original 13 states, one of the states that signed the Declaration of Independence, one of the states that signed the, insisted on the Bill of Rights was the great state of South Carolina. And everybody on this platform tonight is a Southerner. And the President of the United States today and November 3rd is a Southerner. And I'm only sorry that we have some young people who don't understand America and the American democratic processes. Having said that, let me move on to more important subjects. Now let me introduce to you one of the great congressmen from the state of South Carolina, my colleague, Brian Dawn. Where are you, Brian? Come up here and say a few words. Congressman Boggs, my fellow Democrats, I am a Democrat. I'm a South Carolinian. And I'm an American. I want to join my distinguished and able colleague, the Honorable Mendel Rivers, in welcoming to his district and to the state of South Carolina, Congressman and Mrs. Boggs, Governor and Mrs. Luther Hodges, and most of all, the most gracious, charming, magnificent first lady in the history of the United States, Mrs. Lyndon B. Johnson. <clears throat> also, I want to welcome to South Carolina and join my great friend, Mendel the Rivers, in welcoming to the greatest, most historic city of our state, her two charming daughters, Linda Bird and Lucy. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, She's not on the program, but I must introduce to you a lovely lady, the face lady of your state, who is really responsible for this wonderful reception that the face lady of our land has received 
the wife of your governor, Ms. Virginia Russell, come over here and say a word to me. Charleston, and it's a particular joy to come back and to, to be with the First Lady, the beautiful, the kind, the gracious, the lovely First Lady of the world, Ms. Lyndon Johnson. Our great section of the nation has at least two distinguished members of the cabinet of President Johnson, one being the distinguished Georgia and the Secretary of State, Secretary Rusk, the other being the distinguished North Carolinian, your neighbor, the former governor of North Carolina, who has been with us throughout this trip, who is the co-chairman of the trip, the Honorable Luther Hodges of North Carolina. Luther, come talk to Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> Governor Russell, Ms. Russell, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask this particular group over here if they will not keep quiet for about two or three minutes, please. Will you keep quiet over here for two or three minutes? There's something I would like to say in, in a very short time uh, to South Carolinians. I'm very proud of South Carolina. I love its people. Mrs. Hodges' people came from Chesterfield County in South Carolina. I grew up in North Carolina, having been born across the state line in Virginia. My, my, father, my father was a tenant tobacco farmer we later went into the cotton mill town and for many years served and worked in the cotton mill. I know something about what this situation means that we are facing in the South. Let me say this to you wonderful South Carolina people. Of course, I'm sentimentally attached to you and to the South, where I grew up and where it's meant so much to me. The Democratic Party has meant so much to me through the years. The Democratic Party means so much to South Carolina and the whole South. Whether we like it or not, and we're all proud, we are still a poor part of the country and have about two-thirds of the per capita income of the rest of the nation. I simply want to make a very brief suggestion. I want to say that if you, any of you in Charleston or anywhere else in South Carolina want to be Republicans and vote the Republican ticket regularly, you go right ahead. But if you have the interests of South Carolina at heart at the present time, there's only one way to vote, and that is for Lyndon Johnson, the whole Democratic ticket. I want to just say this. You have here your wonderful Charleston Navy Yard. You have at Fort Jackson and the other places many installations. You have 23,000 federal civilian employees in, Char in South Carolina and 63,000 military. You pay into the federal government of this country per year $461 million, and South Carolina gets back one billion and twenty-three million dollars. If you want to be foolish, go ahead and be foolish. But I ask you not to, sentimentally and practically, stay with the Democratic Party. Mendel Rivers, who's going to be your distinguished chairman next year in Congress, one of the most powerful ones, and stay with the Democratic Party, which is a party of our fathers and a party of our future. Thank you very much.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have the distinct privilege of presenting to you one of the great ladies of one of your neighboring states. She doesn't know that I'm going to call on her, but I know she's here. She's famous for a great many things, including one of the finest hams that uh, I've ever tasted. She's the wife of a distinguished United States senator from Georgia, Mrs. Herman Talmadge. Where are you, Mrs. Talmadge? Come up here and say something. South Carolina, how wonderful it is to be here with you tonight to join in welcoming the most gracious and capable First Lady this nation has ever seen. She's been my friend for a number of years and has been wonderful to me, and I know you're going to be wonderful to her tonight. Thank you very much for letting me come. And now your Lieutenant Governor, the Honorable Bob McMahon. Bob, come up here and Great, this wonderful crowd of... Thank you very much, Congressman Barg. All the distinguished guests in the throng that's gathered here, including this group over from my left that I understand is trying to keep you from hearing what is being said. Never did I think we might have to apologize for the actions of any group in South Carolina. We do not tonight, but we ask Mrs. Johnson and the others to overlook those that are trying to disrupt this session. But we do welcome to South Carolina the First Lady of America and her two charming daughters. We are happy to have you here. We have been with her throughout the day. She has been well received everywhere. And I want to commend Charleston and the Low Country for this wonderful throng of people that are here tonight. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, one of the distinguished senators in the United States Senate, a loyal Democrat, a true South Carolinian, a great American, the senior senator from the great state of South Carolina, Senator Ola Johnson. Congressman Bob, Member Rivers, and other distinguished guests, and Democrats. I'm glad to have this privilege to come to South Carolina and speak to you good people. I'm proud that I am a Democrat. Oh, as I look around tonight and see these buildings, and as I drive through Charleston and see the buildings, I wonder how many of them the government helped to build. You will find that the Republican candidate I don't have to talk long to tell you about him. He has never done anything. He voted no on most everything in Congress. If you want that kind of a president of the United States, vote for Goldwater. That's all there is to it. I'm coming back, and I'm going to lay the whole record of him on the line. And then if you swallow him, I hope you don't choke to death. I want to tell you good people also that I don't want to see the farmers of South Carolina have to sell their cotton for 23 and a half cents a pound. You let them go out from under the supports of cotton, and I'm vice chairman of the Agricultural Committee, but if you draw out from under it, you're going to find that the farmers will be wrecked not only in South Carolina, but the cotton farmers of the southeast and the tobacco farmers also. Just holler on. I don't mind hearing you holler, but you're going to have to squeal after the November the third. Now then, friend, my good wife and I have been on the train all day with this 
democratic crowd. And at every station we stopped at, we had wonderful crowds. And all of them hollering for Lyndon B. Johnston and nobody else. Now it has been a pleasure for me to be on this train with a lady that I know and have known for 20 years. And during that time, I found her to be one of the sweetest ladies of the land. And I'm glad she's down here with my good friend, Mendel Rivers, for he and I are going to have to save the Navy Yard for you, maybe. If And I want to tell this good lady, that's the first lady of the United States, Mrs. Johnson, that we welcome her to South Carolina with open arms. And we will be up there to inaugurate him as president after the election next spring. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce a lovely lady to you. This is really uh, Johnson Knight in more ways than one. A little while ago, we just had four Johnsons. We had uh, Mrs. Olin Johnson and Senator Olin Johnson and Mrs. Uh, Lady Brad Johnson and Linda Brad Johnson, but now we got Lucy Brad Johnson, too. So this is Johnson Knight in Charleston, South Carolina, one of the great cities of the world. And I want to introduce to you Mrs. Owen Johnson, the wife of our... Right. Folks, I want to say this. That crowd over there is scared to death or they wouldn't be acting like such idiots. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, your state chairman, Yancey McLeod. Yancey, where are you? Come over here. <coughs> I want to say that this is the biggest evening South Carolina has ever experienced. It's the first time a charming, lovely, First Lady of the United States has visited us in our state on an occasion of this type. I hope that she will come back every year, not for the next four years, but the next eight years. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let me say to you that I'm very happy that that chant about we want Barry won't come to pass. Because you're not going to get him in Maine, you're not going to get him in New Hampshire, you're not going to get him in Vermont, you're not going to get him in Arizona, and you're not going to get him in South Carolina. And one of the reasons you're not going to get him is because of Mendel Rivers. <laughs> Do you know that the state of South Carolina and the city of Charleston, South Carolina, and let me tell you something, I like Magnolia and mint juleps better than anybody. I come from New Orleans, just as old as Charleston. But I'm glad that we got something besides Magnolia and mint juleps. And we got it because we got some congressmen like Mendel Rivers. <coughs> Why, you got a payroll here in the Navy and in the Major Marine and in federal installations of almost $200 million a year. <coughs> now, you want to go out to Phoenix, Arizona next January? 
and ask ex editor the gold water to keep it for you, <coughs> or you'd want to have mental rivers keep it for you. And I'm happy to introduce to you one of the great congressmen of this country, the next chairman <coughs> of the most important committee in the Congress of the United States, the Military Affairs Committee, the Honorable Mental Rivers of South Carolina. That tonight, that tonight, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Well, listen, I'm going to tell you something that you can't read in the newspapers. I have come here tonight. I have come here tonight to tell you why I don't plan to leave the Democratic Party. And I have not come here tonight to apologize for being a Democrat. I tried, I tried, I tried one time helping a fellow by the name of Dwight Eisenhower. The next thing I knew, Fort Jackson was to be closed, the air base was non-existent, and the Navy Yard was to be skeletonized. I got a belly full of Dwight Eisenhower. And I want to tell you something else. I want to tell you something else. I've come here tonight to introduce the First Lady of the United States and to tell you something else that you haven't read in the newspaper. I didn't apologize when I got the Veterans Hospital down here that was scheduled not to be. I didn't apologize when I brought the Polaris base to Charleston, the only one in the United States. I didn't apologize when I brought the Polaris fleet to Charleston, two submarine fleets, 16 ships, 20,000 military personnel. I didn't apologize when I made it possible for Ed Kronzberg to build a larger shopping center in South Carolina right here with a $175 million federal payroll, and this is the only thing that's keeping Charleston going. Now, when I went to Congress, when I went to Congress, 24 years ago, when I went to Congress 24 years ago, this community was marked by people of good manners. The people in this community tonight still have good manners. I don't know where this gang came from. They don't, they don't represent, they don't represent the high class self-respecting people whom I know who claim to be for Barry Goldwater. I don't know who these people are. And I want to say this, whoever's responsible for bringing such as that to this meeting with a lot of fine people from all over the United States ought to be ashamed of himself if he knows what manners is. Twenty-four years ago, when I darkened the halls of the Congress of the United States, I met Hale Boggs from Louisiana. Already in the Congress of the United States was Lyndon Baines Johnson. Lyndon Johnson and Mandel Rivers were assigned to the Naval Affairs Committee. Lyndon Johnson helped me get every single project in this Navy Yard. The other day, when, the other day, the other day, when the Navy Yard was going to lose the Albemarle, I went to the only man I know to help me, 
Carl Vinson of Georgia, who has been in the Congress 50 years. I'm talking to you Navy Yard people now. I'm talking to you Navy Yard people now. I said, I want the album all for Charleston. He said, the only man can put it in that dry dock is Lyndon Johnson. He went to see the president. The album all's in the dry dock now, $15 million and 250 employees of the Navy Yard who were headed out of the gate have their jobs back and they can look forward to a happy new year. <laughs> now, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you that Charleston is living on the handouts from Washington. I'm going to tell you this. The Charleston's in the military figure, the military picture, the military program of the United States because we put Charleston there and it's going to be the Democrats who are going to keep it here if indeed you keep it. You wouldn't have this shopping center here if we should reduce or close this Navy Yard. You wouldn't have this shopping center here if this air base were to be minimized or skeletonized. And we are going to remain as we are in the Democratic Party, and Charleston is going to progress in the party that has put it in the position it's in tonight because we're going to keep it there. Now, now, we have the First Lady of the United States here tonight. She's a Southerner. She has with her her two charming daughters. Good manners has always marked Charleston. Good manners has always marked this community. And I am sure that you, you who come out tonight to pay your respects to the First Lady of the United States and her two charming daughters, are glad to have this opportunity. I'm privileged and, and considerate and indeed a privilege to have the opportunity to present to my people such a charming, gracious, and lovely Southern lady as the First Lady of the United States. Never in my memory have we had a Southerner who was the First Lady of the United States. You know who she represents? The only bastion of freedom in the world. The only bastion the only bastion capable of preserving for humanity the freedom you know. The only nation on earth, the only nation on earth to whom the free world looks for freedom if there is to be freedom. And tonight we have in our community the first lady of the United States, the first lady of the world, Mrs. Lyndon B. Johnson, whom I give to you, my people, with a great deal of pleasure, with a singular privilege, and with a warmth I'm sure you will reflect to her and her party as long as she remains in our community. And I ask you to give her the best hand you've ever given anybody in the history of this community because she loves you as only a Southerner can love a group of Southerners, Mrs. Lyndon Bain Johnson. Is that right? Is this about right? Yeah, about right. Right. just don't touch it. wonderful introduction. After two days on a train, it's nice to be standing on solid ground. And this is very solid ground, for this historic city has been a center of commerce for more than 200 years. But how it has changed and grown since I first saw its beautiful azalea gardens in 1938. I bring you greetings from my husband, the president. These last two 
days on the train and the stops we have made have given me a chance to look at the South from a new perspective, and I am refreshed by what I have seen. The South and the whole nation at this election are at a crossroads between past and future. Your wonderful city tells the story of what is happening. I see great strength in Charleston. It has its roots in the traditions and beauty of the past, but it also has the will to move forward and take part in the future. That is what makes Charleston such an exciting city. There is no better symbol of the strength than this city's historic restoration. It preserved for the future the beauty and the charm of Charleston and it stimulated economic growth as well. It symbolizes, too, the partnership between local, state, and federal government, between, between private organizations and public action. This is what took Charleston out of the dark days of the Depression. President Roosevelt didn't do it alone. He had many partners. Back in 1938, he asked my husband, then a young congressman, to help prepare a report on the economic conditions of the South, because it was in those days the nation's number one economic problem. Today, many parts of the South present one of the nation's proudest pictures of progress. <laughs> President Roosevelt had a trusted friend and partner in Burnett Maybank who served this city well as mayor and served South Carolina well as governor and senator. He understood that cooperation between Washington and South Carolina was the key to progress. And, and it is so with your leaders today. Our good friend, Olin Johnson, has never wavered in forging that partnership since he arrived in the Senate, four years before my husband did. How he fights for the interests of South Carolina. I am proud, too, to be on this platform with Governor Russell and his wife, my good friend, Virginia. You know, She's been working with me on this whole trip through the South, and I found that she is as capable as she is lovely. And you know that a democratic victory will mean that your own Mendel Rivers will become chairman of the Armed Services Committee of the House. I don't need to tell you here in Charleston what that will mean to your city. Lyndon served for eight years with Mendel Rivers on those committees of the House charged with maintaining the nation's defenses. Just as Charleston has been the watchdog of the Atlantic, my husband, with Mendel Rivers, served as watchdog of our defenses. The partnership I have been talking about works both ways. It means economic vitality for this area, and it means strength for our nation. The new, the new support facility for Polaris missiles puts you on the front line of our defenses and our effort to maintain a stable peace through strength. We, 
We share your pride in being the home port of the USS Bainbridge, one of the Navy's three nuclear surface ships, and in the men who were part of its historic voyage around the world. Today, many of your husbands are working on the Albemarle at the Navy Yard. So this partnership means jobs and a better community to live in. It spells prosperity for Charleston, and at the same time, greater economic and defense strength for the whole country. This partnership takes federal resources, and it takes men in Washington who care about the people of the South, their problems and their hopes. And it takes citizens here at home with a vision of the future. We face, we face many problems together. Peace is one and economic prosperity is another. We have reached good and workable solutions in the past through this partnership. Ten months ago, on a most awful day, Lyndon Johnson became your president. Behind him lay the experience of 12 years in the House of Representatives, 12 in the Senate, and three years in the Vice Presidency. Into these last 10 months, he has poured all the energy, intellect, and heart he has to try to keep our country prosperous, to preserve peace, and to plan for a greater America. You, you can tell what sort of a president he will make because you have lived through these 10 months with us. A democratic victory means we will face new challenges together with imagination and zeal. We draw on the past for strength, but we do not plan to turn back. President Roosevelt said, the only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. <laughs> Let us move forward with a strong and active faith. I thank you. God bless you. Before, before, before we close, I want you to see these two lovely young daughters of Mrs. Johnson. Uh, I, I, I'm going to ask Miss Lucy and Miss Linda to come up to the microphone and ask them to say a word to you. privilege to have had quite a few friends from Charleston in Washington with me. I've heard that you 
great city where the Cooper and the Ashley formed together to make the Atlantic Ocean. And I've heard an awful lot of other great things. And I just want you to know that I'm thrilled that I finally had the chance to come and see the people that make Charleston the great city they do. Ladies and gentlemen, aren't they wonderful? Please give them a big hand, all of them.